All right, friends and neighbors, time now for another networking video. This time we're doing part six of our voice over IP journey, and that means it's time to talk about signaling protocols. So up to this point, we've talked about a lot of things. We've talked about some of the organizations involved with not only telephony, but voice over IP in particular, traditional telephony, things like tip and ring and publish switch telephone network and local loops and things like that. Uh, we've also talked about codecs, the thing that we use to actually capture voice or audio or video. And then of course the transport portion of a VoIP call, which means the real-time transport protocol and the real-time transport control protocol. But we still have to talk about some important issues like how do we start phone calls? How do phones get registered? How does the call server even know that it's supposed to be handling things for this particular phone? How do we dial a number? How do we ring a phone? How do we handle all of what we call the borscht signals? Busy, off hook, dial tone, all of those things. And then of course, we gotta find a way to hang up the phone. All of those things are included in the signaling protocol or handled by the signaling protocol. And in the inset, I've got a picture of a VoIP phone. Even things like populating this interface are handled by the signaling protocol. So without further ado, let's talk a little bit more about some of the big signaling protocols we see today. The big three, now historically there have been more, but the big three that we usually talk about are H.323 from the International Telecommunications Union Telecom sector. You can go right out there and look at the recommendation from the ITUT. But of course, when you're doing packet capture or when you're trying to debug things, you don't actually see H.323. H.323 is the umbrella. What we see in packets is H.225 and 245 especially. Sometimes you see 235 if you're doing some security. From Cisco, or previously Celsius, we see the skinny call control protocol, or sometimes called the skinny client control protocol, which means SCCP, or skinny. And then, of course, we've got the session initiation protocol, or SIP, from the IETF. That is covered in RFC 3261. Now, of the three of them, 323 comes out of telephony. And so it was there historically, had a big jump at the beginning. Uh, Skinny had a lot of support from Cisco, but the one that seems to be the winner in all of this is SIP. So today we talk about SIP trunks, we talk about SIP connections, a lot of the providers, Vonage, for example, uh, Skype, they all use, all use SIP. So SIP is non-proprietary and it's actually very, very, very simple to set up and use and to understand what you're seeing when you're looking at packet capture. We'll look, take a look at uh, 323, for example, really, really complex. So those are the big three. We've had uh, Megaco and 248 and things like that uh, previously, but these are this is where we sort of settle up. All right, so H.323, as I said, it, it comes from the International Telecommunications Union Telecom Standard, and it is a heavyweight protocol. If we just look at the you know sort of blurb from the beginning of the recommendation, it handles everything. What kind of terminal are you using? Do you want to test the media before we get going here? Do we want to establish you know a master slave recommendation or a master slave relationship or the primary and secondary if you prefer? Uh, so there's a tremendous amount going on within the H.323 family of protocol protocols. Uh, now another dead giveaway that you're using H.323 is that you're going to see port 1720. But as I put here on the slide, there's not a whole lot of activity on the standard in the last 10 years or so. And that's, I, I think this has largely been relegated to legacy uh, installations. Now that said, there are still companies that use them. I, the capture that I'm going to show you is from a company called Polycom, for example. So it's still out there. Don't uh, don't misconstrue you know the the idea here that it's gone it is by no means gone it's just a really really busy heavyweight protocol let's take a look at an h.323 capture so here we have it i've got a very simple filter for this one tcp or udp 
and when we're looking at a VoIP call, remember that we always start with the signaling protocol, then we drop into transport, and then usually we drop back into the signaling protocol. And the signaling protocol is almost always TCP. Well, here we've got our initial uh, connection. We see that we we're establishing the standard TCP SYN SYNAC ACK handshake, and there's our port number 1720 and H.225. So this is the initial part of typically most, well, I've never seen one without it, right? H.323 connections. And here we drop into H.245 where we are beginning to set up things for the media. And so this is very, very standard sort of communication that you would see. And then, of course, we drop into RTP and we have established the channel for RTP. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. And then all the way at the end, we drop back into our signaling protocol. All right. Now our next signaling protocol is the skinny client control protocol, sometimes called skinny call control protocol, SCCP, from Cisco. They bought a company called Celsius, and sometimes when you're loading up or looking at packet captures, you'll see MAC addresses register for Celsius. Well, that's why. Now the argument for use for Skinny is that there are millions of installed Cisco phones. So it stands to reason that you would occasionally run into Skinny or actually do a deployment of Skinny. Now Cisco has some very, very robust um, enterprise scale unified communication setups. They have their call manager. Uh, but you can even do Call Manager Express, which is built into a router it can be part of a router image and so it's very easy to set up we use it in the lab all the time to make uh, to make small topologies or to understand the basics of voice over IP so you can say that they have an enterprise scale version and then a much much smaller one now it is non-standard not only is it proprietary it's non-standard in the sense that it doesn't use RTCP for information about latency or call performance it uses other skinny messages for that, but it still uses RTP for transport. So it's very easy to read. You, the messages are titled, you know, exactly what's going on. It's just a code, and then Wireshark does a nice job of, of uh, understanding what those codes mean. And then, of course, we've got port 2000. Well, let's take a look at a skinny deployment or a skinny capture. Okay, like the previous capture, we are going to start off with our signaling protocol, and then we're going to drop into RTP, and then of course we got, well, we got some skinny messages here, I've got a couple of calls, but we drop back into our signaling protocol at the end, and you can see that the skinny messages, at least as interpreted by Wireshark, are very clear, right? We're going to do a key button here, we're going to play some tones or stop tones, here's some statistics instead of RTCP. So very, very clear what's happening with, with Skinny. But again, proprietary and non-standard. So, you know, you're, the times that you're going to see Skinny are going to be limited to a Cisco deployment and probably an older Cisco deployment since um, Cisco also has adopted ZIP. Well, let's take a look at our last signaling protocol, which is the session initiation protocol or RFC 3261. Now there are lots and lots of other RFCs associated with SIP and I've got a partial list up here if you go out to the RFCs you can see all of these and do a little light reading if you like. Uh, and by definition the session initiation protocol is all about figuring out multimedia transmissions such as well just about anything that you would care to envision as going across a network. You may remember from the slide on H.323, it said audio support is mandatory, the other ones are optional. Well, SIP is trying to do that integration into all things internet, all things web, all things that travel over a data network. And so it's really got um, a whole collection of services that it's trying to support. In addition, we're trying to establish a, a mapping between names, IP addresses, provide some redirection, I'm not here, call me over there, all that kind of stuff. And so the, this is really one of those places where we see, you know, I decide how I'm going to get a hold of you and you decide how you're going to pick it up and it doesn't matter what we use. In between, SIP will help us figure that out. Now the SIP 
uh, the SIP port that we're going to see is 5060. Let's take a look at a SIP capture. Well, hey, look at that. We're going to start with our signaling protocol, and then we're going to drop into RTP, and then we're going to drop back to our signaling protocol. Yeah, that's pretty clear. We're hanging up. Now, this capture also shows us how simple SIP is. There are just a couple of SIP messages at the beginning here, and then we're off and running into RTP. So if we compare this to, say, skinny messages or um, H.323 messages in terms of number and complexity, well, SIP, uh, SIP wins. <laughs> okay, let's talk about one more important thing that signaling protocols do for us. So, the signaling protocol gets us registered, helps us dial numbers, we can populate the interface, we can tie a name to uh, an IP address, we can do the busy off of dial tone, all that stuff, we can hang up a call. But one of the other critical ideas is that we are going to take a signaling protocol, which runs on TCP, and we're going to move to a transport protocol on UDP. So every signaling protocol has to have a way to indicate a couple of important details regarding the voice transport. And that includes the port that you're going to use, the IP addresses that you're going to use, or an ID of some sort to keep the RTP packets together, and then of course the codec that you want to use. So every one of our signaling protocols has a mechanism to do that. And so let's take a look at each one of them. So HA323 uses H.245 for that. Skinny uses particular uh, media or logical channel messages and SIP uses a session description that we're going to see here in a second. So let's see if we can find maybe the codec that you're going to use and the port number that you're going to use for the media transmission. And we'll start with H.323. So here is our H.323 capture again. And if we take a look, we've got this RTP stream here clearly right and if we go back to the beginning of it boy I went a little too far didn't I here we go we can see that um, we've got we dive from 245 to RTP and RTP is going to say well we're going to be using 3230 as our port number right here's our UDP transport and we can see that this is a type 127 which happens to be a dynamic type for RTP now if we go to an H.245 message, there is our port number right there. And so you can see the complexity of this as well. So these are the type of messages that H.323 uh, uses to convey what's going on in the media channel. And so we've got a, a bunch of these messages that describe both one way and then the other way uh, communication parameters. Okay. Let's take a look at Skinny. Now Skinny's going to do it in a little bit different way, but of course it's a different signaling protocol. So what we're after here in uh, RTP is that we've got not only this port, 28,884, but we've also got you know, our codec. In this case we're using a standard codec G.729. Well, if we take a look at the open receive channel message, there is one of our details right there, port uh, uh, 28,884. So again, we, we are trying to communicate what we're going to use in the RTP channel. All right, let's take a look at how SIP does it. And here is our SIP communication, and we can see that we've got, well, let's see, I've already got it highlighted here, but we're going to drop into RTP, and we've got 34,008 as an example, and we're using G.711 here. So, when we look at SIP, we can see here that SIP has got sort of a compound message here. So we collapse some of this, and we look at the session description. Here is PCM MULA, that is G.711. And where'd the port go? I lost it. So, 10,066 or 660, and let's take a look here. There it is. So, I was looking at the one direction. There we go. So, 10,660. So, that's how 
SIP handles the media transport parameters or characteristics. Well, that will do it for signaling messages and signaling protocols. Uh, we've covered SIP, Skinny, and H.323, not only their place in the universe, but also how they do things like registration, uh, dialing phone numbers, and then setting up all of the characteristics for the media transmission or the transport, which of course is RTP. So hopefully you have a pretty good handle on that by now. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Like and subscribe if I helped. And may those packets always reach their destinations, no matter what signaling protocol you're using.